Hello there, friends! Another day of being amazed by the crazy, mad, unbelievable news and rumors in the CS2 scene. Surely it's hard to top the events that happened the other day, but there are still some interesting developments to watch. For example, Boomwich has already played for Cloud9. Also, where will Simple go, what's happening with Falcons, and much more. Today we discuss the most incredible transfers of this autumn. Without further ado, let's get straight to it. In the past couple of days, everyone has been discussing Cloud9 and Navi, which is perfectly logical. However, let's not forget that there are massive reshuffles planned in Phase, Liquid and even G2. I will talk about all of this next. As you know, there have been many rumors surrounding Manasi and Nico recently. A couple of days ago there was even talk that Falcons sent inquiries to both Nico and Simple and whichever of them agreed to will join the team. But as you may recall, Simple has denied everything, while Nico remained silent. Now theories are forming around this and even Kassad has an opinion. If Navi sells Simple, just buy back Manasi when Nico goes to Falcons. Actually, that sounds pretty cool because it was Simple that prevented Manasi from joining the main roster and now the path is clear. However, I personally doubt that Navi will go against their principles and sign Manasi instead of Wonderful, but it would be super hyped. Although the rumors around the young talent don't end there. According to Harumi, Manasi is one step away from signing a contract with Falcons. As you may recall, it was said previously that he would only go with Nico, which means Nico is also one step away from signing a new contract. Manasi himself finds this amusing. But as we know, if a player reacts to rumors, it often means things are nearly settled. I'm not sure if this logic applies to Manasi, but it seems like there's another genuine interest in him now. The confirmation of negotiations between Nico and Falcons comes from HLTV. Plus, the insider KRL recently mentioned that Shea want to buy Snappy. In short, it all sounds like a really good dream team there. Furthermore, HLTV reported yesterday that Magisk has already been acquired, so that's pretty much official. With Magisk in, get Snappy, Nico and Monesi, keep Boros and you'll have the perfect team for the next major. Everything could be decided in the coming weeks, but it seems like a lot hinges on Nico right now. If he agrees, the dominoes will fall. But guys, I promise you, offer him a brewery and he'll start packing his bags instantly. But of course, Cloud9 is what everyone is talking about the most. How are they going to play without Shiro in their match on Rubet? Are they interested in Simple or not? And can we get answers to all of these questions, please? First of all, as Overdrive mentioned, Boomwich is there. It's now official, he will assist his former teammates and play as a stand-in for the entire tournament. That means basically the entire tournament, not just one game. Electronic, Perfecto and Boomwich are back together, with only Simple and Bit missing. Add Blade to the mix and we will get the lineup. According to Overdrive, Boomich is here for the long run, plus most of the one-win contracts for the team are ending pretty soon. Although Overdrive later said that things are not settled yet. Boomich is currently just assisting his former teammates and no contract has been signed. I was disappointed for a moment because I thought it was all set and ready to go, the trio would be back together. And just when I was a bit down, information came from one win players themselves. Yesterday Boomich managed to play for both Cloud9 and his main team. They even won again in the CCT finals. Boomich is indeed a legend, playing for Cloud9 and then winning two matches in a row for one win, earning a prize of $22,000. And after the finals, Travis, his teammate, wrote that it seems like this was the last tournament together with Boomwich. He wished him good luck and said that Nickelback would be the captain now. I'm not sure if this is just a joke or whatever, but uh, when your own teammates bid you farewell, Cloud9 should immediately capitalize on the situation. If this isn't another post-meta irony, it's safe to say that Boomwich will stay with Perfecto and Electronic. Now we have to wait for the official announcement. But wait, hold on, what about Simple? <coughs> А потом рокировочка такой места Акселя бить залетает, и ты что будешь делать? Нет, ну возможно, Симпл не возьмут клауд. Почему? Потому что там пол поставлен против будет. Да ладно. Прикольно же будет. Симпл в колодах. Жестко. Так скажу, что с вашим любимым Симплом половина топ игроков вообще отказывается играть вообще. А ты откуда знаешь, что с ним отказывается играть? 
Overdrive also mentioned during the stream that Cloud9 did indeed try to sign Monacy, but he declined. Shiro currently has no offers at all. No one expected him to leave so abruptly and without any rumors. And as for Simple, you've heard it all yourself. I have a feeling that in the coming days there will be a lot of juicy rumors. Well, and now it's time to watch the first match of Boomich with his new, or should I say, old team. Here he is most likely becoming the full captain, if he hasn't already. Because Cloud9 has been showing a very solid attack from the very first rounds on their map pack. And you know who was the best and key player? No, not Boomich, it's Hobbit. He won a round solo in a 2v1 situation, then went to plant B and single-handedly disintegrated the next round, doing a quadro. Now the only thing left is to figure out what role Shiro's leaving behind, and it turns out there's an answer for that as well. Now Cloud9 is a team of snipers, maybe even Boomich will play with Op, and now Hobbit can pick it up too. And you also may remember how Perfecto played with it. In short, they've basically introduced a new role, the transitional snipers. Of course, it's all good fun, but in the meantime, Cloud9 managed to take a whooping 6 rounds in their attack. For Ancient, this is excellent, especially without Shiro. It feels like no shortage of firepower whatsoever. For example, here's Boomich casually doing a quadro. It's clearly that he's really eager for this opportunity to play at the tier 1 level once again. They also made a few changes in their defense setup. Boomich went to the cave where Cloud9 often had issues and Perfecto joined Exile at A. And as we can see from the earlier rounds in defense, these changes have been working quite well. Cloud9 reached a comfortable 12-6 in this manner. Lastly, I'd like to show you how well Perfecto did with Op in defense. He was basically the primary sniper for the most of the half and performed his role excellently. And the match ended with Perfecto and Exile. They teamed up to eliminate five opponents together. In my opinion, Perfecto is always reliable no matter who he plays with. So Cloud9 had no trouble securing their map pack at 13-8. Was holding the line the entire time, Perfecto. Now Cyclops in, sees the shadow, and deals with Crims. It's only after remaining. It will do some damage, but it'll be the final nail in the coffin from Act. Hobbit got 24 frags with 1.91 rating. Can he always play like this now? Boomich didn't disappoint either. He ended up with a positive 1.04. And yo, his new team won, what more do you need from him? Now all that remains is to prove themselves on Overpass, where a sniper's role is crucial. Let's see how the guys will handle it without Shiro. And here Cloud9 is off to a great start again in defense, while nothing seems to work for Fnatic so far. By the way, here we found the answer to how Cloud9 will play without an AWP. Nah, they won't lack a sniper, they have one, the future number one in the world. Boomich was wielding the op like a pro, enough to remove the nickname and just leave the Cloud9 logo, as if Shiro hadn't gone anywhere. They lost the round, but that's clearly not Boomich's problem. And just when Fnatic wanted to make a comeback, the ideal echo round from Cloud9 swooped in. No, that's a nice first kill, he's gonna stay up on it. For a little... Fnatic could be in trouble, but they're getting pushed by the pistols right what? now. Hold up, they're forgetting about the corner. Oh no, this is all falling apart. Fanatic! Uh, Boomich just drive swings and he finds two kills with that USP. Oh, what the hell? What a monster he is. He seems tired of the tier 2 scene and is craving for top tier action. He's confident as hell making plays with USP and AWP, not giving any chances to his opponents. As a result, Cloud9 closed out Fnatic 8-4 in the first half. But in the second half, Mezzi single-handedly won the pistol round, giving this team hope for a comeback, and they used it perfectly. They performed excellently in gun rounds, and the score quickly turned 10-9. Fantastic defense by Fnatic. At 10-10, a crucial moment occurred. The attack broke through the entire defense superbly. No one really understood where the bomb would go, A or B. Everything was open for the taking. But then this happened. That's it up towards the rafters, and that means that Axon can get that bomb down, but Cloud9 didn't anticipate that Crims would be there. It's a one versus oh, no. one, and look, it's a wrap on a niche. Getting stuck in a crucial 1v1 clutch? CS2 online. I love you. How is this even possible? Electronic would probably have won the clutch with a 99% probability. This was intense, and certainly with a bit of a tilt. 
I would be shocked though if Cloud9 had managed to win this in the end, but naturally Fnatic came out on top. Boomich by the way finished uh, the top of the table, he's clearly in great shape. And guess how the third map starts? With the same Mezzi, who once again won the pistol round all by himself. What a genius for pistol rounds, gifting the team an excellent start for the second time in a row. Cloud9 needed to take the first round in their attack to finally fill the map, and that's exactly what happened. At 4-0, Perfecto and Hobbit brilliantly played 2v3 and shook the opponent's defense. They did it again, then again. And do you know who was the main catalyst in this comeback? Hobbit and Perfecto. They played through so many close situations. To put it into perspective, Cloud9 only gave away one round after this. Here, a great example at 5-4. Hobbit goes alone to B, where there's only one defender and he gets the headshot. Perfecto pulls back, evades two defenders and that's when Hobbit assists. He stands in the smoke and gets another one. The teamwork of these guys is impressive. Seriously, Cloud9 is playing very strong online. In the second half, Fnatic once again won the pistol round, leveling the score at 9-9. But Cloud9's continuation was the same, it was once again won by Perfecto. In the crucial round, he went solo and broke into B, a defender's dream with a minus 3. And that's it, it seems like Cloud9 switched on after that and started surging ahead. Honestly, when you look at it, Fnatic didn't win much besides pistol rounds. In the first half just one full round, in the second the same. Everything else was round streaks after pistol rounds. They need to do something about this quickly, because in fact CS2 heavily depends on pistol rounds. So basically, if Cloud9 had won those pistol rounds, Inferno would have been easy for them. Like 13-3 or 13-4, but instead it's 13-10. It's Boomish's first victory with a new team, and it's quite confident, to be honest. This is disaster! This is drama! Fnatic, they're not gonna be able to pull it off due to the merits of time! It's Cloud9 to steal it away from Fnatic. It was a valiant effort, but it's Cloud9. Congratulations to the guys with their first win. Boomich definitely didn't disgrace himself at 1.11 rating right from the first game. He also wrote that he's happy, which is the most important thing. I'm sure the guys have no regrets about bringing him on board. Furthermore, VP defeated NIP, which means the next match will be Cloud9 against VP. And that sounds really fun. By the way, there are many interesting things happening at Rubat as well. VP leads their group while Spirit is losing everything, probably waiting for Shiro. Furia is dominating in group A and you can see other results on your screens. That's it from me, friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you really like the content that we do here and leave a like and share your thoughts in the comments below. I'm not saying goodbye for a long time. See you soon.